Well, it th doesn't mean that once we let him in, we can't throw him out. No, but I'm just saying, see, it was so unceremonious when he walked on here that one day and you didn't even let him get on the air and you threw him out without even mentioning him. <laughs> you know, we didn't even say he was here yeah. that day. Right. And, uh... So he, then it was like, you know, F. Howard Stern all over town, and I don't need that show. Right and he was never doing this again. Gilbert? Gilbert? Yes. You're on the air. Hi. Yeah, I, I, call, I figured I should call first. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, but we have too many guests already. Oh, yeah? Who do, who do you have? Uh, the guys from... Uh, who are these guys from, Robin? These are the guys from uh, Pistol Dawn. Pistol Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. I got their album. <laughs> <laughs> and we've never met them before. <laughs> and it'd be hard to work you in. I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to screw up that interview. <laughs> oh, how can we never call first? How can we just walk in? No, no, I am calling. I figured I'd call before I actually walked in. Well, how long do you think it would take you to get here? Yeah, gee, I don't know. It might take a while. <laughs> well, Regis is here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. What the hell is this? I thought I came in here and got my old time here. <laughs> and then David Brenner's here. Hey, hello. I can't What the hell? I mean, I'm in here. And Arnold Schwarzenegger, too. Guten Tag. I don't understand what is this guy doing here. I'm going to have a new movie coming out soon. See, so we don't have room for you. We have three guests already. Oh, I know. Gee. Well, it's a good thing I called. I what? thought you had given up radio, actually. Yeah. I th we read in the paper that your, <laughs> after your failure on WABC, you had given up radio. Yeah, because that, that was my big dream in life, to do a talk show on ABC. <laughs> yeah. I really wanted that to continue. You know, WABC is like a real weird station. The program director, who admits that, I don't think he spends time listening to his own station. All he does is listen to our station. Yeah. Well, he listens to me. I don't know if he listens to all the station. Because he hasn't started programming music yet. Yeah. He hasn't pro he, he <laughs> <laughs> So he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so he's a weird guy. I mean, what's that guy's deal? What does he keep telling you? Just be like on the Howard Stern show? Uh, which, the guy from ABC? Yeah, what's his whole deal? What is uh, he, like a Howard Stern groupie? Because every interview I read with him, it's like, well, we want a Howard Stern type show with more class. Or taste or something. And then what, whenever someone, like a sort of a regular on my show, he puts them on and gives them their own show. Yeah. Pat Cooper, uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, he tried out, uh, I think, David Brenner. Then he had... Um, I was reading a whole list this weekend of people they're going to try in that same slot they gave Gilbert, which he abandoned this weekend. Yes, I gave up my series. <laughs> <laughs> Why, were they pressuring you too much? Yeah, it was just too much pressure. No, what was going on? Why did you get... You're not the type that gives up anything. Uh, no, they... Actually, it was never supposed to be a whole show, like a whole series of shows. They just called me up. They said Joy Behar uh, had the sickness in the family. She had to be out of town. Would you just take over, you know, as, as a favor to us? You know, you'll do a guest spot. Yeah. And then this girl in the post wrote it up as like I was trying my own series. <laughs> your own, your own, uh... Hey, I like you better on the phone. Yeah. Well, you know something, Howard, I... Okay, this week Leslie West has his own show on ABC. <laughs> it's like a guitar thing. And guess... They don't know what to do with that thing. They just can't get that off the ground. Well, I was a little upset because what they said in the, the paper this weekend... Yeah was that Gilbert decided that he, his radio wasn't his cup of tea. Yeah. So, he, so that's uh, why he comes here. <laughs> <laughs> he does a favor. I'm not really good on radio, so I just go to Howard's show over and over. How fast can you get over here? I, it might take a while. All right, so come on over. Okay. Okay. He's coming over. Well, at least he called first. Oh, please. Got to give him that. Well, from now on, that's what he has to do. Yeah. Even when he walks in, he has to get on the phone and ask for me. <laughs> I don't know. I said to him the other week, I said, just call us first. And he stands there and he shakes his head. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep telling you, oh, you cut off all your hair. Yeah. She Looks nice. My Auschwitz look. Yeah. You know what? Gilbert never tells us anything either. And that's what we were talking about in the office one day, how he'll have things going on. But he won't tell us. So I'm in the movie theater this weekend, and what are they promoting? What's the new trailer? Problem Child 2. Yeah, he told us about that one. He just never tells us when he's getting a radio show. No, I don't remember him <laughs> saying he was in Problem... This is a sequel to that John Ritter... And you did Larry King, right? Yes. Did you see the interview with Robin Williams on um, PBS? No. With David Frost? No. Robin Williams shaved his hands and his uh, arms. 
I'm not kidding. <laughs> you know how hairy he is? Oh, yeah. He shaved it all off. There's yeah, he's no got hair. Those bushy shoulders. Yeah, but too. he's hairless now. Ooh. I mean, he's he's entirely hairless. Like, there's, not, there's no. He looks smaller to me. But to the <laughs> hair. I swear to God. His wrists and his hands look like very. Very thin and weak. <laughs> you always look like he was wearing a sweater. Yeah. All right. Uh, why don't we take a break? Oh, okay. And then when we come back, the uh, I come on. There's a Gilbert's break. here, but Gilbert, we got to do news. But you, you Gilbert can't... doesn't even like us to do commercial breaks. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do my kind of radio, <laughs> even though I don't like it. <laughs> I thought radio wasn't your cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> do you ever hang out with Ron Williams? You don't get to hang out with Oh, those yeah, we guys. party. No, do you know him at all? Not really. Has he ever come like to see one. you? Play? I, I mean, I know him like the way you know anyone in the business. The way yeah. you know us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of like you know anyone in the business, you know. <laughs> Cut and go. You know anyone in the business, yeah. You don't have any show business friends? Uh, yeah, me and Robert Culp. <laughs> All right. He probably does have, like, one show business friend, but you'll never get yeah, it out of him. Yeah, because Jerry Seinfeld has Leno. Gilbert has, um... Shirley Hempel. Is that right? No. Is it Shirley Hempel? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. You got her? That's who they assigned? <laughs> Super. Hey, let me tell you about uh, Best Health, all-natural gourmet, soda and iced tea. Let me tell you about the whole industry. Soda... Hey, I don't let my kids drink sodas. On a very rare occasion, if they go to a party or something, I let them have soda. If I'm going to get them soda, I let them have Best Health All Natural Gourmet Soda. And I'll tell you why. See, yeah. when soda started, when soda was born, yes. it was full of chemicals and garbage and junk. Yeah, that was and, the old days. But everybody, you do a soda commercial. Uh, Pepsi. Yeah, okay. No Pepsi offense to Pepsi. Out. It's just, you know, there's a lot of chemicals and stuff in there. There's, Pepsi? There's does a Pepsi commercial? Yeah, the one with Tiny Tim and, uh... Oh, that one. You got the right thing, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes. No, no, I'm with the chill out. Chill out? The Pepsi chill. Oh, yeah, he's on the Pepsi chill out one where they go chill out. Yeah, with Ruth Westheimer and Bo Jackson. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. You get paid a lot for that? Oh, a fortune. No, seriously, you get, like... Actually, not a big, big amount. It's just the exposure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's what my agent said, at least. <laughs> yeah, you get scale, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> You're good in it, though. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a small dose yeah. of it. <laughs> it's on a lot of Gilbert. Just yeah. the right amount. Dr. Ruth, though, that's, you know, it's like, ugh. I mean, is anybody tired of her yet? I mean, I'm sure she's supposed to be gone. By, you know, she's not supposed to be part of the scene anymore. So, yeah, she, you know, she sort of keeps plugging away. The, what is she saying? It? The, what is it called? The, the, I like it. Yeah, I like I don't it. don't understand the chill out, but I like it. Yeah, it's like a laughing concept, you know. It's like you know, everyone talking about the chill out, and no one knows what it is, and it's frightening. I think they're gonna do one with Alan Sue soon. Let me ask you something. When you got your commercial for the soda, uh -huh. did you just show up or you called first? Yes, I, I had to call. You just walk in on the set. Yeah. And you heard there was a shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling if Gilbert if Gilbert did this in every facet of his career, he'd be an unbelievable success. He'd be everywhere. Hi, I'm here for the shoot, but we didn't hire you. I know. But if you if, if you don't put me in the commercial, I won't talk to you again. Quick, give him a part. All right, let me tell you about Best Health, all-natural gourmet soda. So you had sodas that were full of chemicals and preservatives and stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> you know why Gilbert keeps coming back? He knows the only good radio is here. And it's the only place that actually makes him sound good, because we're, we're able to sort of harness him. Well, you know, he did leave for a while. He tested the waters elsewhere. Yeah, he tried the other shows. They all... I wanted to be a permanent replacement for Joy Behar. They hear you on here, and what it is, they get excited. Yes. But they don't realize it's our chemistry. It's yes. the chemistry between <laughs> Howard, Robin, and Gilbert. Yes. No offense. Yeah. It's kind of like when Harpo tried to do his own film. Right. Yeah. This doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, if you want boy. the next time you get a radio gig, I'll go with you. Oh, okay. And that's what they're looking for. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, so, okay. So you got, like, really good sodas. You know, they tasted good. They were fine. But they had all this artificial junk in them. Well, they so, didn't taste like real things. Right. So then they went to the all-natural sodas, which was better because at least you didn't have all the chemicals. But then, thanks to Eric Miller and, and Best Health, he said, wait a second. I'm going to make a natural soda that tastes unbelievable by using gourmet ingredients. Like with their iced teas when they use 100% pure spring water. So he has... So all he always goes that step further. He has all-natural gourmet products. That's why you must look for Best Health All-Natural Gourmet. Drink Best Health All-Natural Sodas and Iced Teas. Oh, good. 
Mm-hmm. I wish it was an IHOP here. I know Gilbert. You, when's the last time you've been to International House of Pancakes? Seriously. Uh, long time ago? Long time ago. Listen to this. It's more than just pancakes, though. No, but well, we had them up here. Huh. They make yes. 16 different types of pancakes, and we had these. You see, this is your kind of breakfast, though. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert takes most of his dates to uh, IHOP. Yeah. You do, well, let me tell you, this is great. If I'm going to get engaged, I do. The, <laughs> <laughs> the International House of Pancakes has been serving America for over 30 years. They serve breakfast all day in addition to lunch and dinner now. Now they're offering pancakes in more than 16 varieties. I had the harvest grain and nut pancakes. They are unbelievable. And the syrups, 16 different syrups or something like that. I don't know how many different syrups. How That's many? what my favorite thing, the different syrups. Jackie had three egg omelet with bacon and cheese. All right, with a side order of bacon. The that bacon, was his second omelet Yeah. that morning. He had, six, he had a six egg omelet. He had a three egg with cheese, but it was supposed to have the bacon. This doesn't have bacon! <laughs> so he complained, ate it, while they cooked up another one, and then he ate that. Yeah, he had to complain. <laughs> you know, all right, I'll eat this one, but baby one with bacon. <laughs> then they also gave him a side order of bacon. And then, Fred, you had you had pancakes and waffles. Oh, French oh, no, toast. French toast. They, I, they was going to have the waffles, they didn't bring the waffle iron. But you got to understand something. It's very unusual stuff they make over at IHOP. I mean, it's really good. I mean, it's, it is some breakfast you get over there. Over 400 locations in the United States, Canada, and Japan. Don't laugh at me, Gilbert. I'm yeah. being serious. Okay. What's the no, matter no, with I you? I know it's very important to you. For kids under 12, there's IHOP. <laughs> You're damn right. I love it. Listen to this. Special for a limited time. You know, Gilbert laughs, but this is meanwhile. This is everything he loves. Yes. Three egg omelet with your choice of one filling and three buttermilk pancakes, all for $3.99. Uh-huh. <laughs> You'll have extra money left over for lawn furniture oh, in yeah. your house. <laughs> you have Florida orange juice. Buy another fold-out chair. You know, because Gilbert comes on here acting like some kind of gourmet. But meanwhile, all he ever eats is, like, pizzas and, uh, but right? Toaster pizzas. Yeah. Toaster pizzas. It's not even, like, pizza you order out. Where, where the outside's burnt and the inside's still cold. Florida orange juice for only 99 cents. Served all day, Monday through Friday, except holidays of participating restaurants. And they've got the, uh, you know, the coffee, the bottomless. They uh-huh. invented the bottomless cup of oh, coffee. Oh, yeah. Coffee pot, Howard. If coffee has a bottomless cup, how yes. does the coffee stay in it? Who are all these people drinking coffee from a bottomless cup? If it's bottomless, how are they able to call the coffee in a... <laughs> I mean, they put it in a bottomless cup, then it would be all over the table. That's right, Jerry. Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld just stopped in, Rob. We have no time for Gilbert because Jerry's here. Because, you know, I'll tell you something. I take what's from life. The oh. little things in life, the pet peeves. That's why... <laughs> the pet peeves? <laughs> That's I... why people like your brand of humor. Because I'm not trying to do anything like political or anything like that. Right. I take the simple things. The things that aggravate me. Like what amazes you? Okay, what amazes me is why they put the eraser on a pencil. Right. Why are they, Why is there an eraser on a pencil? Why not have a separate eraser? Why not have a separate eraser? Right. But this way you got to turn the pencil over. Right. And you have to stop writing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's a topic I know you like. Yeah. The, yeah. the sky. The sky. Why is the sky blue? Right. Why? Did they originally want it green and then someone decided that's not a good color? <laughs> <laughs> How does the sky get its color? I thought you'd do a routine on that. How does the sky get its color? Why is it what? just clear? If air is clear... Air is clear? How <laughs> does it all of a sudden become blue? <laughs> what, you mean you put it in a bottle, it's clear, but then you send it up and it's blue? <laughs> this makes no sense to me. <laughs> Who decides what color the sky should be? Who are these people? Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> well, hey, let me tell you something. <sighs> That's very, very good material. <laughs> Why is the ocean wet? <laughs> Do they want a dry ocean, but the fish walking blindly? Come on, hey! <laughs> it's great to have Jerry Seinfeld and Gilbert in the same room. <laughs> well, Gilbert, you must be plugging something. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I, I know Philadelphia, June 10th. All right. On the 10th, that's funny. Where bone. in Philadelphia? Funny uh, Bones? Funny Bone. Right. And I don't know where I am in Woodbridge. I like on how the Gilbert, like... Like tries to get the name of the club a little bit wrong, so it's like there's an yeah. important game. Actually, it's funny what? bone. It, it, meanwhile, the place is probably funny bones. Funny bones. I don't know the name in Woodbridge though. Woodbridge. I'm working Woodbridge, New Jersey, and uh, ninth. I have no idea what the name. That's of the also club Gilbert's is. move. But he yeah, got up but I, early. I actually don't know. Yeah. To do this. All right. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You did Larry King, I heard. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes uh, Pennsylvania. You're I gotta get. A to- I gotta copy that. How did that go? That that went good. Yeah. Did he like it? He likes me. Yeah. 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 So he sat there and did that he, funny little. Oh, laugh of the it? best. 
the best he had on an author. <laughs> <laughs> he had on an author. This was about when I got off. Did he uh, did he propose to you? <laughs> 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 I love you. <laughs> you look fantastic. Oh, but I've always you look, wanted you. You look great. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Mm, boy, mm, you look good, Gilbert. <laughs> you didn't bring up his marriage and stuff, did no. you? No. No. Why doesn't anyone bring that up? What's Everybody's Gilbert? so polite. Yeah, I don't get it. No, that's why he won't have me on. I'll go on there. I want to go on next week. Hey, let's call up and get me booked. I don't know how you're going to do that when they won't take your call. I'm willing to fly to Washington to be on that show. Just to do this. Yeah. Because I once said to Larry, hey, I'll be on your show if you let me on satellite. He goes, hey, I want you on the show, but not on satellite. I'm one of those people that can't get away with the satellite. Right. He'll take Demi Moore, but not you. Uh, right. <laughs> Did you have to go I'll, there, I'll, Gilbert? You weren't on like, satellite, were you? No, no. I was on the radio show. Yeah. Oh, but, you weren't on yeah. the TV show? No. But uh, when oh. I got in there, it was like 2 in the morning, and he had some author on, and he was dozing off. The author or Larry no, King? No, Larry King. He, <laughs> had his, slept? he had his face in his hand, and his eyes were closed. The engineer said, come over and look through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? He was sleeping. W while he was doing the interview, or was yeah. it like during the commercial? Well, this guy was talking about fulfilling your dreams and everything, and he yeah. went into a whole long speech, <laughs> and Larry King just put his hand <laughs> there. And put fell his asleep? face in his head and fell asleep. <laughs> he started dreaming. <laughs> That's pretty I mean, funny. It worked. So then, like, what did they do? They went in and woke him up? Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean, he's able to fall asleep for, like, I think two <laughs> minutes and then wake up. So the engineer just, like, nudged me and said, quick, look. He's really into the show. Look, well, if you were up proposing as much as Larry does during the day. You know, I got to ask Duke Zebar for an energy drink. <laughs> No, you should then slip his hand into warm water so he peed all over his head. <laughs> hey, I wet myself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn, how did that happen? <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> how does Larry King do the show while... Uh... While peeing on himself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about these late-night disc jockeys who pee all over themselves. How is it that nobody calls him and asks him about his marriage? I mean, that's like in the news every day. How is it, you know... How is it that... He can get away with that. Yeah. I can't get away with anything. Nobody else could. <laughs> Good friend. You make woman for me. All right, Robin, let's start the news. Oh, boy. Oh no, boy. I did not tell you I was never doing this again. <laughs> with I'm Gilbert? With Gilbert. <laughs> no, I'll keep him under control. I'll no, whip him. No, no, no. <laughs> You gotta do it. It's your job. <laughs> that's uh, that's anarchy. Eight fifty. I'll give you a second to collect your thoughts before oh, you. Oh, my thoughts are collected. It's well, you Gilbert need. Who's <laughs> you need a second to collect your thoughts to prepare for this. Right after these words. Ninety. All right. What the hell is that? Hey, announcing the perfect beginning and end to your Bermuda vacation. Free airline tickets with a six-night minimum. Stay at Marriott's Castle Harbor Resort. Were you just running a commercial for them? Uh, no. Oh. No. This is a 30 second commercial? Hey, oh. 30 second spoken commercial? Yeah, 30 seconds spoken. Now, come on. That's going to turn into a 60 anyway. Free airline tickets. What about the rest of my vacation? Well, beautiful Bermuda is the most civilized island in the world. Castle Harbor, with its own championship golf course, is the most civilized resort in Bermuda. Marriott Castle... I'm just... i got to familiarize myself with this. Marriott Castle Harbor's free airline offer. The perfect beginning and end to a per... You're telling me... I can get free airline tickets with a six-night minimum stay at Marriott's Castle Harbor Resort. I can get free airline tickets. That's what this is saying. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Hey, boom. <laughs> that's that's an amazing offer, Robin. You've never had. You've never. Uh, right? No. Call your travel professional at 1-800-223-6388. I'm telling you the truth. According to this piece of paper, Gilbert, yes, sir. you could go to Bermuda. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. She's saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, yes, sir. he was just saying yes, yes, sir. yes, but now you've given him another idea. Yes, sir. 1-800. Yes, Mr. Howard. 223-6388. Hey, Gilbert, you had a couple of minutes to think about how you're going to calm down during the news. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. Howard. Robin, I'm very excited about the facts you handed me. I don't know if I can contain myself. <laughs> I am being uh, mentioned as a possible replacement for uh, Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. And I am very thrilled to accept that. Well, not by anybody important, Alan. Well, 
if Howard Stern's going to be a permanent replacement, should I kiss up to him like I do with Johnny? All right. <laughs> what happened to your uh, impression of uh, Stephen uh, Wright? Yeah, it's turned into Larry King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me help you. I haven't heard him for a while. If Johnny Carson. If Johnny no, 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 Just listen for a second. Okay, you're sorry. Good. If Johnny Carson <laughs> goes and leaves The Tonight Show and Howard Stern. Oh, that's it. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm I'm becoming like Rich Little. Yeah. Right? All yeah. All your oh, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, yeah. if Johnny Carson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what Rich is that? Little, it's like, it's sort of like, now, Jack Benny. You're known for your impressions. Yeah. I mean, you better... You better like, you better all right, Chester. <laughs> oh, look, Jack Nicholson just walked in. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Edith Bunker. Oh, it's Edith Bunker. Archie. <laughs> Why, James Cagney's here, you dirty rat. Have you seen Rich Little lately? <laughs> yes. I mean, all. remember we had him on the show a couple of... I guess like almost a year ago. And it was very hard to tell who he was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very embarrassing. Well, I just want to say how excited I am, Robin, that you gave me this fax. This appears in the Courier News in the letters section. Yeah, they apparently have a question of the week. Who should follow Carson as Tonight Show host? And uh, Jim of Holland Township recommended me. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert got all excited for yes. a second. He's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that guy gets to be the host of the Tonight Show. <laughs> no way. His name is above mine. It says here, I don't think Jay Leno should follow Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. I don't think Jay has everything that is needed to carry the show for a long time. I think he should be replaced. I would recommend Howard Stern, <laughs> <laughs> who is on the morning, who is on the morning radio every day for hours on end. Howard is very comedic and has a quick wit, which is similar to what Johnny has. Also, Howard would appreciate the several million dollar year salary a lot more than <laughs> Jay Leno would. So I think somebody like Howard Stern is needed. Unfortunately, Howard's material at the moment is a little off color for some people, but I think with the Tonight Show writers, he could tone that down. I could. I could tone it down. You, you know what? You can work clean with writers. I could, with writers. Given writers. <laughs> writers other than Jackie and Fred who insist on giving me dirty lines. <laughs> when Howard does an interview, he can still be as witty and quick off the mark as Johnny is. See, I've done interviews. I can interview Gilbert like in Johnny Carson style and do it in an interesting way. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I could change. Ah, Gilbert, you know you should really call first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm interviewing the Gabor sisters, and you just can't stop in, Gil. Howard also has a loyal following. His daytime radio show has maintained an audience for years, and once he's accepted on NBC TV, he'll maintain that kind of following he does on the radio. For 20, 30 years, just like Johnny. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that this is bad logic. What paper is that? <laughs> the Courier what? What is? Where's Jim from? <laughs> he was on Mars with you, doesn't he, Fred? <laughs> I'm a neighbor. He was your neighbor. No. no, that's very nice, Jim. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jim. Oh, well, very so big great in love. media. Oh. A lot of people <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> this guy Jim is going to be very important one day. You'll see. <laughs> Robin, what uh, is in the news, Gilbert? Just relax. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. If you have something pertinent to yeah, say, yeah. Sorry. we like when you chime in. It's just, yeah. you know, just just. It's just, if I want your... anything, I'll just call from the outside. <laughs> right. Choose your moments, Gilbert. That's yeah. all we're okay. saying. And Gilbert will be at Funny Bones in Philadelphia coming up. June 10th. On the 10th, on the 10th Robin. And, and somewhere he in Woodbridge, know about New Woodbridge. Jersey. Yes. Woodbridge, New Jersey. On the 9th. But well, look I'm... for him. Call his name in Woodbridge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Howard, we have another maniac on the loose. Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Gilbert. Gilbert's I won't. here right now. I don't care. I won't call before I come in. <laughs> no, this guy is attacking women with a screwdriver, they think. Oh, yeah, I heard about that Women guy. who uh, live and work on the lower, uh, in lower Manhattan have been attacked in the subways. This guy apparently follows his victims for a while, stalks and follows, and then starts stabbing and punching. Didn't he stab the first one in her ass? Yes, he was he was poking her in the butt as she walked <laughs> up the stairs and she just felt this sharp pain and all of a sudden she realized how funny he was stabbing her. Maybe he was taking her temperature. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously he doesn't know quite how to do it. Man. Mother. Yeah. Mother, mother, it was horrible. <laughs> it, she, she, she got stabbed in the butt, mother, mother. Oh, oh, how, how, it, it's so har, 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 horrible down there. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, Subway. anyway. Such a safe place. Mm. 
Oh, yeah, let's see. What did he do? Uh, he never talks to the victims, and he doesn't rob them so far. The first you attack... You him in the butt. What's there to talk about? <laughs> occurred... <laughs> you before... want to talk about what I just did to you? <laughs> <laughs> before 6 o'clock on Wednesday at the Spring Street IRT station on Lafayette Avenue, a 36-year-old woman was waiting or uh, walking up the stairs and felt a sharp pain in her buttocks, then realized that a man was jabbing her with a screwdriver. Phillips had a regular. <laughs> Is that important? Hey, I'm interested. <laughs> the next day, at 7.30, he followed a 22-year-old woman from the IRT Canal Street subway station near Lafayette to the lobby of her building. The male punched her and began to jab her with, this, with a sharp instrument. In each case, the attacker fled into the subway. The first two victims were treated at hospitals and released, but this latest one, the latest attack, uh, that woman is in uh, serious condition. And they don't have a picture of this guy or anything? I mean, nobody can identify him? Well, they've described him as a heavy-set black man. Mm, sounds like Gilbert. 25 <laughs> years old, 5'10", and 225 pounds, clean-shaven with a medium complexion. He's dressed in dark pants and a dark shirt. He should be easy to find. There's only about 50 billion of those on the street. But it sounds like he doesn't shower either because he never changes his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> he might have the same outfit, <laughs> you know, several times. Oh, I see. He just wears uh, like a uniform. several of the same outfits. Well, anyway, this latest victim, he followed her. It was, again, uh, the Broadway Lafayette subway station on the IND line. Uh, he punched and repeatedly stabbed the victim in the ear, face, and back. Someone should arrest Al Sharpton. It sounds like him. Five foot ten. <laughs> They didn't say he had a big pompadour. A pompadour. <laughs> big pompadour haircut. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Fred, tell Robin how you used to attack women in the subway with a level. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> used to stab them in their ass. Well, I used to think that was the greatest piece of equipment with that little green stuff in it. It's nice. <laughs> He'd go all the way into the green thing. <laughs> Anyway, um, all of the victims have been white between the ages of 22 and 36. Mm, that's all Gilbert's victims. <laughs> and they say this guy is a lot more vicious than the dart man. Oh, yeah. And it seems that the viciousness of his attacks is increasing as he goes along. Do they have a special name for this guy? No, not yet. Screwdriver man. <laughs> My problem is I gotta throw away the screwdriver after each attack. <laughs> Why is that? Yeah, you know, after a foot gets contaminated by being up the butt, you don't wanna, <laughs> you don't wanna put that screwdriver back in your pocket. <laughs> Once you stab a girl up the butt with it, you're certainly not gonna put it back in your pants And again. then they can use it as evidence against yeah. you. So I got to have a clean screwdriver each time. Yes. Well, that's nice. Or carry around a wash and dry. Haven't you been asked to host your own show on WABC on weekends? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But I didn't feel that it was my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel yeah. personally my cup of tea is stabbing a girl in the butt. I, I see. Yeah. That's what you're good at. That's my cup of tea. See, originally, Joy Behar was supposed to stab people in the butt. <laughs> but now but you're doing it. to go out of town. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, police are looking for anyone with information on this man because they want to get him off the street quickly. He's very dangerous. And the Guardian Angels. They're going to put, give up their t radio <laughs> to go catch him. To go man the subway station. I think that beret is on their heads too tight. Hey, but wait a second. What are you going to, um... Don't you think it's kind of weird that, like, uh, black guys now all of a sudden are into this dart man, butt man, screwdriver man thing? What is this, a new, uh... Kind of a what is it? I mean, it's and they don't. It's not like they're doing it for money or something. They're not grabbing a purse. No, it's just hostility toward white women. Mm. I have that same hostility, but I control it. <laughs> you haven't stabbed anyone yet. Not in the butt. Oh boy! Help me, butt man. <laughs> the Riddler's attacking. <laughs> butt man. Huh? Hey, we could call you Butt Man. <laughs> hey, it's me, Butt Man. And <laughs> <laughs> where's the butt phone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let me reach for it. Oh. Another tragedy this weekend, Howard. Quickly, a Robin, the butt computer. <laughs> a three-year-old boy wandered onto the Amtrak train tracks and was hit by a train, of course, and killed. Where were his parents? Now, whose fault is this? Everybody's blaming Amtrak, saying Amtrak should have put up fences. A fence? Yeah, because there was no fence around this particular portion of the track, and apparently there's this park that the boy was in playing and his mother was there yeah. and he wandered onto the, the train tracks because nobody was watching him. Three-year-old, you got to watch all the time, though. And now he's dead. 
They said even so, you know, one of the train guys jumped off the train and tried to resuscitate him, but they said the kid was all over the place. Right. Well, hey, you know, I mean, I don't know the whole situation, but it does seem to me that even when my kids are in the backyard, I watch. You know, when they were three, I would watch them. I, you know, it's... Yeah, you know, there's another story in the papers that doesn't get as much play as this of a three-year-old out on Long Island who was found in the bottom of a pool. Now, there, there's nobody to blame. Right. But because this was an Amtrak train, it's like, oh, Amtrak, you're killing our children. Right. But you got to watch a baby. You don't let a baby go wandering off. I mean, the train tracks aren't right in the park. Right. I mean, that baby had to so be gone. So the kid off. was pretty far away from its mother. Yeah, I don't know. That's and gone a, a pretty long time to get that far. Gilbert, you're an expert on such things. Oh, well, he was running away from oh, me. I was man. trying to stab him in the butt. <laughs> oh, I see. So <laughs> that's what it was about. He, he you said, were chasing him with a screwdriver. Yeah, he said it's either get run over by a train or get stabbed in the butt. I see. <laughs> and uh, he chose a pretty easy decision. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> easy decision. <laughs> well, everybody's carrying on like, you know, it's the train's responsibility <laughs> to watch the kids. Well, I blame the train. <laughs> I blame his butt. <laughs> his white butt. I blame that big white butt. Also, in the news, we lost someone who's been a part of our lives for many, many years. The fabric Fred? of our lives, Howard. <laughs> Fred? No. We can't lose him for some reason. No, him I can't lose. But David Ruffin of The Temptations, we did lose. Now, he was good. Now, he, <laughs> he had a black butt, which wasn't as favorable to me. I heard he was having some problems. No, he wasn't having any problems. He was getting all the crack he wanted. About. Oh, he had no problem. <laughs> he was a rich guy, though, right? Um, not rich. No. no, I don't think he was absolutely rich. Ruffin was 50 years old, and now there are reports that he spent his last day at a crack house. Hmm. I guess he knew it was his last day. Might as well try everything. <laughs> now, I try to house uh, my shoe dive in a crack, but you know... I didn't have the sunshine on that cloudy day, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and I died. <laughs> <laughs> but they're now saying, yes, uh, and this is a pretty weird story. Right. Because he was delivered to the hospital in a limo. Right. And then the limo sped off. Yes. So now they're looking for the limo driver. Apparently he was with a friend of his. He and this friend, uh, na they now say, uh, borrowed the limo from a limo company and then went to visit a crack house. And then all of a sudden, uh, they came out of the crack house. David didn't look too good, and they rushed him to a hospital where he died. I have a number of the limo driver who drove David Ruffin to the hospital. Really? Yes. You want to hear it? Should I call him? Absolutely. Nobody's else, nobody else has talked to this guy. Now, mind you, this was in Philadelphia. So you must be calling a Philly Ooh. number. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. He might not be there. This is the guy who drove. David Ruffin on his last night. That's right. He's not there. Oh. He's hiding from the police. Yeah, because they want to talk to him. Police have not released his name yet. I don't know how you got it. Anyway, Ruffin lived in Philadelphia since 1989 with his girlfriend, they say here. And uh, she says he resisted his efforts to uh, get him to give up the drugs. Apparently, the drugs had something to do with him being booted out of the Temptations in the first place. You don't do He's drugs, do you, Gilbert? for a long time. I didn't know what kind of crack they wanted me to give up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Buttman and his crack. <laughs> I see. I don't think Gilbert's with us anymore. <laughs> um... In the uh, 1988 book, Temptations, Otis Williams... I had a temptation the... to stab someone in the butt. Or original <laughs> Temptation. See how Gilbert gets on a theme and he'll yeah. never get on it, <laughs> and no matter what we're doing. And he'll never let us get through anything. This is the problem. <laughs> what about, at one point, do you come back to being Gilbert? <laughs> Okay. Or maybe yeah, get when, into a kind of temptation theme. Yeah. Whenever it's time for a plug, that's what I come <laughs> in with. Oh, and uh, I will be playing. Can't you be David Ruffin now? <laughs> Hello, or did David... Yeah. Ha, I have David Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Otis Williams said Ruffin's mm. ego was as large as his talent, leading to a lot of friction in the band. At one point, Ruffin got so 
such a big head. He refused to ride in a limo with the other four temptations. He had to have his own car with his name mm. on the side. Mm. And eventually this led to them just saying, you know, we don't need these kind of problems. And they booted him out of the band. Eventually they put Joe Piscopo's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing story, isn't it? <laughs> oh, goodness. So anyway, uh, you know him because uh, his was the voice, the lead singer on My Girl and Ain't Too Proud to Bag, two of the uh, biggest temptation hits. I've got such a That's not him. On a cloudy day. Day. That's not David Ruffin. Oh, it's not? No. <laughs> I thought you said I know him from that. <laughs> I don't know him from that? That's the guy, Eddie Kendricks. You're doing the high falsetto oh. voice. Oh, too bad. <laughs> I didn't know Eddie he Kendricks died, too. Kind of, no, Eddie <laughs> Kendricks is not died. Oh, I see. <laughs> Figures, I do an Eddie Kendricks impression. <laughs> I don't do a David Ruffin. We'll have to wait for Eddie Kendricks to die. <laughs> Before you can do that. I got you. I guess you <laughs> say. <laughs> is that what he says? I guess you say. I guess you say what, what could make, make me feel <laughs> this way. My girl, my girl, my girl. Talking about my girl. My girl. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, Don't they play hotels now? Like the Temptations? Do yeah, they're doing a lot of... You know, you can see them in Atlantic City roaming around. Are those the guys like I saw that. in the lobby in Atlantic City? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's like nine guys now. The well, temptations. it was always five guys, but the, there's only, like, one or two of the originals left in it. And they were walking around the hotel wearing big Temptations jackets, like, so that, that girls, I guess, would recognize We've got to go else? on stage in a minute, but first let's take your bags up to your room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How else are you supposed to recognize them if they don't wear their names? We'll be back right after these words. <laughs> is this? Oh, Nutrisystem. Well, I have no problem talking about that. Nobody likes thin more than me, Robin. Thin is in. And look at yourself in your bathing suit. Look at you. You look horrible. You really do. You know what it is? You've been making excuses. Ever since I started doing Nutrisystem commercials, you've been making excuses. Every time I do one, you make an excuse. You don't need that. You can do it yourself, right? Of course you can do it. But you haven't. Yep. You've been making excuses. Now, Nutrisystem as a special sale event that has taken away your last excuse because everyone's excuse is, well, it costs too much money. Well, now it doesn't. Listen to this. Pay for a 15-pound program and lose the rest for free. That's right. Pay for a 15-pound program and lose the rest for free. Now, now, if that special offer hasn't convinced you to call Nutrisystem, listen to this. Healthline magazine written by faculty members at Stanford University rated Nutrisystem number one. They rated 16 diets, and Nutrisystem was the preferred program overall with a perfect score of 100. Weight Watchers didn't do that well, and Jenny Craig only got a 60. A 60! This offer is available today and tomorrow only, so if you've been thinking about losing weight, think no more. Do it, do it right now. Do it today. Take advantage of this great offer. Call 1-800-321-THIN. 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 Nutrisystem. Now there's a right way to lose weight. Nutrisystem. Gilbert's looking at me lovingly yes. because now he appreciates what I do for yes. a living. He sees that I'm... Because I realize uh, radio's not my cup of tea. See? See, I look at you the same way with those yeah. loving, adoring eyes when I see yes. you doing stand-up yes. comedy. <laughs> I go, wait, that's not my thing. Right, that's Robin? Gilbert's thing. That's I go, right. ooh, look at Gilbert. He's so powerful. Gilbert's with that good at that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he was just giving me that look like, <laughs> yes, why can't I do that? By the way, go to Poor Billy's on Route 9 North in Woodbridge, New Jersey, and see Gilbert on the 9th of, of June. And see him on the 10th of June at Funny Bones in, in Philadelphia. That's right. We found out where Gilbert's going to be in Jersey. Good. Somebody always calls in. I think that's his special move. He tries to act like he forgets where he's going. You know, he's got yeah. a busy schedule. I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm so busy. I'm I don't so know busy. where I'm being next. I can't keep track of these that's comedy That's a clubs. business. Ah, thing. heck. That's something my agent takes care of. Yeah. Oh, that's something the guys in the suits do. I'm an artist. <laughs> How long were you actually on Larry King? Um, About 45 minutes. Maybe. Really? Maybe. Yeah, I think. And did he ask you serious questions or was it just fun and games? Uh, so, Gilbert, where are you playing out here? You want to marry me? <laughs> there he goes with those straight answers. <laughs> I would like to get a tape of that. Oh, I thought you were on the TV show. No. Did the two of you start talking about broads and stuff? <laughs> hey, you get any good trim lately? 
Hey, Pussy, so who have you proposed to lately? Hey, hey gotten any trim? How about the gay sheesh? Because <laughs> that's how Larry gets it. He proposes. Yeah. You know, I, I find the quickest way to get a girl is to offer marriage. <laughs> really? Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, mm, mm, mm. You make friends for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Larry ought to do, maybe. Have a scientist invent a woman for him. <laughs> he wouldn't have to marry her. <laughs> we belong dead. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Larry. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> 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 okay, let's continue with the news, Robin. Well, Howard, I just thought I'd let somebody in the industry tell us what David Ruffin meant to the world. Paul Grime of Billboard magazine. Ooh. How come they always call Billboard, never me? Ooh. Ooh. Well, look, you started doing Eddie Kendrick, so <laughs> why would they ask you? I thought Eddie Kendrick's was very good. <laughs> no, uh, it was David Ruffin. Who's he? <laughs> All right, here's Paul Grime. This is a guy from Billboard magazine. Got to respect that. It's a very important publication. David Ruffin wasn't as much of a household name as Gladys Knight or Smokey Robinson or Diana Ross from the Motown uh, assembly. Nice eulogy. <laughs> yeah, he, wasn't really much. Hey, he never made a name for Nobody himself. Nobody liked him. Okay, granted, he didn't have a career, but still, <laughs> Fine, attention but, must be paid. Uh, he was the, the main oh, here we go. voice of the Temptations, and they certainly were. Motown was the songs that, that he sang lead on, My Girl and Ain't Too Proud to Beg, are very much a part of the fabric of our lives. Ooh. Well, let's have him at the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Now, granted, he, he didn't really have much of a career and no one knew who he was. Well, granted, he sunk as a singer, yeah. but uh, <laughs> as a human being, he was very nice. His career was over in no time, yeah, but uh, all that aside. Did you see the paper that said his limousine had mink flooring? And right, the one he put his name <laughs> on the side of it yeah. had mink on the floor. And mink seats. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, you know, instead of, like, saving up your money and, and like, saying hey, maybe one day this will end, he's busy with mink seats on his uh, limousine. Well, he did have $30,000 in traveler's checks on him at the time of did his Did he really? Death. Wow. And they don't know what happened to that either. Hmm. So. Those aren't any good. You can't <laughs> cash those. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, what else did uh, Paul have to say? Huh. Hold on. The Temptations were the top R&B group of all time, but, but their real significance, I think, is that they transcended that mm. uh, label. Mm. And in the 60s, their songs mm. were as much a part of pop playlists as the mm. Beatles and the Stones and the Beach Boys. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we have to remember David Ruffin. <laughs> oh. And <gold. laughs> <laughs> Oh, if oh, you want to attend his funeral, ah, 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 you got Frankenstein oh. here. Hold on. <laughs> yes. It's going to be. Look, Frankenstein will be here for the, ah. until the next commercial, so I can keep going. Yeah, I want to ask Frankenstein one question, though, Robin. I've never interviewed Frankenstein before. <laughs> How come you killed that little girl? Uh, 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 I tried to stab in butt. <laughs> oh, it's a screwdriver. <laughs> Frankenstein is butt man. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying that you were just trying to stab her in the butt with a screwdriver. And she jumped in the river. <laughs> <laughs> it was Amtrak's fault. I see. Any All right, go ahead, Robin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the funeral will be held in Detroit on Saturday at the Bethel AME Baptist Church, so... For David Ruffin. Yeah, let's all get there. Gibbert will be appearing there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to go there while the brain is still fresh. <laughs> <laughs> How come you never burned up in that windmill at the end of Frankenstein 1? And, and I mean, in other words, you burned up in it, but yet it was you like a sequel. You came back. Yeah, yeah, how'd you come back? I fall to water oh. underneath windmill. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh. That's interesting. Yeah. Burning when not my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, Howard, you know, the other big story of the weekend was that it was Tony Awards. Mm, did you see those Frankenstein? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's his favorite. Oh, ah, ah, good. Maybe we should have Gilbert on the TV show again, dress him up as Frankenstein. <laughs> and do this interview. Yeah, hey, just interview him. <laughs> was Frankenstein nominated for yeah, anything? Me like Tony Toon. Ah, Tony Toon. Like, ah, Tony Toon. How Tony about Tony? <laughs> and, and Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> me like Tony Toon and Baba Booey. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, speaking of Tony Tunes. I hate the Tonys. I didn't watch them, Robin. I was protesting. I didn't watch either. Hey, what's the name of that play you told me I should go see? Six Degrees of Separation. Oh, that's the one my father said was horrible. No, your father has bad taste. Because I, I gave my wife a birthday gift. I wrote her a little note and said, you know, even though I hate going to plays because why should I spend like three hours of my life sitting through something I hate or sitting through something I'm not going to remember after five minutes <laughs> and, you know, totally ruin my whole psyche by going into Manhattan on my day off. Yeah. I just don't understand seeing plays. I just don't get it. I mean, you're bored and you're sitting and twitching around in your seat and that's supposed to be it and you're paying for the privilege. That's you. And my father, so I said, oh, Robin found a really good play that doesn't have any music, just talking. And he goes, well, don't go see Six Degrees of Separation. Has he seen it? Your father's Bob Hope. Don't go see Six <laughs> Don't go see, hey, don't go see Six Degrees of Separation. I got to tell you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what well, was his problem Shields, with that huh? one? Well, let me make sure I'm, I'm saying the right thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Robin. <laughs> what were you singing? Uh, they're meditating. They're oh. doing their transcendental meditation. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know their line well, is. Well, we'll get back to that. See what mm. play you're supposed to go see. But Frankenstein, did you like Six Degrees of Good! Good! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Black, black man, white family. Good! Was that what it's about? It's about a black guy who tells who schemes his way into a white family's home by telling them he's Sidney Poitier's son. Oh, that's it, huh? Yeah. Oh, I want to see that. Oh, no, it's not any good. Frankenstein, did that make you sad? Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something else that'll make you sad. Yeah. The Tony Awards held last night Tony in New York. Tune. Good. All right, now you're doing right. good. The, the yeah. big winner, the big winner was yeah. the Will Rogers Folly. Music maestro, please. Oh, that looks like the worst play I ever saw. That's the guy, who's that, Carradine? Yes. Yeah. And I, oh boy. <laughs> and what is he, he stands there with Just a Just hit the music right. first. <laughs> oh, oh, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of stuff my wife wants to go say. Actually, honey, I'm going to go and hear a bunch of bad songs. And my mother goes, oh, shut up. It's great to hear the music. But uh, what about my sister goes? I love the music from Fiddler on the Roof. I go. That was what, that was years ago. A hundred years ago. That's when they actually put some couple of good tunes in a play. They don't do that anymore. Anybody who's a decent songwriter goes and writes for the movies or goes to you know goes and makes a record deal. Now they're tapping and dancing. You like this Frankenstein? Ah, 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 John Carradine's son. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know Will Rogers personally? Uh, 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 good friend. <laughs> he, he friend to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Never met man didn't like. I <laughs> think that one for best musical. Great song. I'm twirling a rope, hidey ho. <laughs> Look at me, I'm twirling a rope. I'm twirling a rope. Man, but I want I I to hear, I want to hear the words. They call him Willow Mania? They call it Willow Will Mania. Right. It's intercontinental. And is that tapping noise? They're actually doing like dancing? Yeah, they're tapping, yes. Will O Mania. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll tell you one thing the Tonys did for me. I was thinking of taking some friends to see the secret garden when they come to town. You know, they have a kid. And I said, okay, you know, I want to give them a taste of Broadway. Yeah. And last night they. <laughs> They featured some of the songs from that. I was like, oh, my God. You wanted to kill Thank yourself. Thank God I heard this before I took them. They'd have been turned off the Broadway forever. Did you see that play, Frankenstein? Ah, good. <laughs> good. Good. Well, speaking of that play, here's the little girl from it. She won an Oscar. I mean, an Oscar. She won a Tony last night. Daisy Egan, a little 11-year-old. Mm, mm, mm. I push her in water. <laughs> <laughs> I pick up and throw in the water. I don't think I can talk. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's mm. what she's like when I'm in bed with her. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Gilbert makes him cry. Oh, yeah. makes all the 12-year-olds yeah. cry. Yeah. I he hears a little cry. girl, he oh. comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, when you're in bed with a woman, does she sound like that? <laughs> she starts shaking her rattle. Oh! <laughs> Just so everyone knows what it sounds like when Gilbert's in bed with a woman, I'll play yeah. it one more time. <laughs> I don't think I can talk. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you, Gilbert. <laughs> Why does he have an audience in his bedroom? Because Gilbert is very proud of what I he does. Okay. So is Frankenstein. Ninety-two-three. <laughs> 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 you do spots. <laughs> now. Now. <laughs> yes, Frankenstein. <laughs> Guys, we're saying to Gilbert, that's the kind of role I want. Like, <laughs> like you were talking about the... Well, I'll tell you about this in a minute, about the Tonys. But I better get through the Brother commercial first. I realize if I start talking like this, then Philly and Washington don't get to hear us. Right. Hey, how you feel about... Hey, I, I gotta ask you something, man. All right, Brooke Shells is crazy, isn't she? Man, isn't she something? Yeah, she's... <laughs> <laughs> what happened to her? She was such a good actress at nine and ten. She lost it. She peaked. She's like, you know who she reminds me of? Jay North, Dennis the Menace. <laughs> he was great as a kid. I was watching that show this weekend. Boy, is that a good show. What, Dennis the Menace? Yeah. Because I was watching Pretty Baby, and Brooke Shields was really good in it. This one, Jay North, uh, no, Dennis was annoying Mr. Wilson because Mr. Wilson was going to paint in his backyard. Mm -hmm. And that was the whole premise. That was it. Just Jay North annoying him. Carried that whole show himself. Him well, you Mr. know Wilson. what's funny? Whenever I see these little Daisy Egans now, you yeah. know, thanks to Jay North and all these other kids and Patty Duke, I wonder who, is she being abused and tortured <laughs> well, you when tell she's me. not on stage? I don't think I can talk. Because <laughs> my mother's beating me. <laughs> all right, all right, listen. Hey, that's just hey. speculation. No, of course she doesn't beat her. Hey, if you own a computer and you've been waiting for great printing, I'm talking about a great printer. Brother make you know, brother makes great stuff. They're, if their printer is half as good as their fax machine and their brother P Touch. Frankenstein, do you like brother? Ah, you do? Ah, I didn't even know you knew it. Do you have a computer? Uh, desktop computer. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the new brother XL 1500 works with all IBM compatible and computers. Turn 12 year old girl over. <laughs> what? <laughs> the new brother XL 1500 works with all IBM compatible computers. It's a high speed 24 pin dot matrix printer with complete graphics and letter quality text capabilities. It has button. That was an attractive noise. <laughs> <laughs> it has bottom and rear feed, so you can use it without anything. I mean, so you can use it with what? anything, from multi-part forms to invoices. It also gives you a choice of type styles and even an 8K memory buffer, so you can print one project while working on another. All I can tell you is, if you know anything about the Brother Company, and you know anything about computers, you will know that... If you that know anything. If you know anything, Frankenstein. <laughs> Brother XL 1500. <laughs> Brother XL 1500 is the only printer to buy. Check it out today at the Wiz PC Richards. <laughs> Sitting here with Frankenstein, he'll be appearing at... <laughs> poor Billy. Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. You like Gilbert, right? Ah, he's, he's good. Friend. Friend. <laughs> poor Billy's at Route 9 North in Woodbridge. <laughs> Woodbridge. Good. That's right. In Woodbridge. And that'll be on June 9th. Woodbridge, New Jersey. Good. God. <laughs> and Frankenstein, you'll be there watching Gilbert. Right? <laughs> and on June 10th, you'll be in Philadelphia? Funny bone. <laughs> With Gilbert? <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey, good, good friend. <laughs> <laughs> you, you make woman for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so are we talking about the Tonys? Yes, and... Um... Like, you know, they, they had like that guy Topo there. Topo, Topol. Topol. <laughs> the guy from Fiddler on the Roof. Topo Gigio. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from Fiddler on the Roof. Like, that's one of those cool roles that I would like to get, like, like Yul Brenner and the King and I. The King, Yul Brenner left a $20 million estate. From doing that. From over and over and over you know, again. And be like, you know, it'd be like 80 years old and be like, dun, 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 and people like, oh, 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 Yul Brenner. <laughs> and the same role over and over again. That guy Topo is still singing... If I were a rich, rich man, and now the the cool thing about him is he's not young anymore, so he actually looks like that guy. Yeah, he's grown into the role. Hey, because you know what was wrong with the King and I the movie is that you couldn't understand why Yul Brenner died. He was a young guy. Right. 
Now? <laughs> made sense. Made sense. Yeah. Who are these people who go to see you, Brenner? <laughs> I mean, at least see him when he has cancer. That's right. That makes sense. Makes more sense that way. Of course, the kid I had say, cancer. Go to a play if the actor has cancer. <laughs> then it's realistic. <laughs> That's right. It's uh, intriguing. Made That's one of my poignant. pet peeves. Yeah. <laughs> so the point is that uh, I would like one of those roles. I would actually like a role like Frankenstein, because everyone used to say Boris Karloff was a great actor. But uh, I would like a role where I didn't have to say anything, except, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> Or Bella Lugosi, even. Yeah. Who buried, I reminded Gilbert, that buried himself in a in coffin. that thing, yeah. With a cape and his Dracula stuff on his makeup. And they buried him right next to Ann B. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they? And Tarzan. Tarzan was another guy who All went that way. All people who get stuck in their roles, <laughs> they get buried in the same cemetery. They get buried cemetery. in the same cemetery. <laughs> you got Tarzan, <laughs> Ann B., and <laughs> Dracula all buried next to each other. I They're mean, saving a funeral it. plot for Goober. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt B lived right next to Mount Pilot when she died. <laughs> and had people calling her Aunt B. <laughs> no, no kidding. And then uh, Dracula, same thing. And Johnny Weissmuller used to run up and down the halls of an old age home doing oh, the car Oh, I remember. Singing. Yes. I heard about that. You know who they're going to bury also? Grandpa Al, I think. <laughs> <in that funeral. laughs> Herman. 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 <laughs> Tarzan was swinging from IV pole to IV pole. Yeah, <laughs> right out the window. <laughs> Along those vines. But, you know, in reference to this thing about child actors, like, you see this little girl, like, she probably has a chance because of, like, Jay North and all those people. Probably her mom knows how to, like, people watch the mom, how the mom treats her and how she treats the mom. Maybe things have gotten Let's better. Let's hear her again. I hope. We hope so. She seems like a... Because we won't know for 20 years. That really does have to be, like, maybe the cutest speech I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't think I can talk. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, 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 oh that's good. Thank you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> you don't have to thank you. don't have to say thanks. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, Robin, let's continue. Wait a minute. So, uh, Leah Salonga, who was uh, one of the... Asians uh, who got to play an Asian role. Mm. <laughs> Asian, <laughs> Asian, <laughs> Asian white actor go. <laughs> <laughs> she said this was like a dream come true. Oh, this can't be for real. I remember watching these on TV when I was a little girl in Manila, and this this, this can't be real. She said, I thought for a second I played the wrong card. She sounds yeah. like oh. she sounds like a little girl. <laughs> sounds like this one. I don't think I can talk. <laughs> okay, just relax your legs. <laughs> oh, stop it, Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, 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 wait. You're hold welcome. on, hold on. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> I'd like to first of all, thank God for mm. all of his blessings. I'd also like to thank Actors Equity for... <laughs> For giving me the chance to come here to the United States. Mm. And this also goes to everybody back in mm. dreams of winning a Tony. Well, I got one. And the dream can come true for someone else, too. Thanks a lot. God bless. She doesn't sound very oriental. Yeah, she's from Manila. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> Those are bad. Right? <laughs> good, good white actors. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Price also won, even. And I think Tommy Toon won for Best Director. In Tony Toon. <laughs> 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 Me one Tony tune. And uh, there was a gaffe. Apparently, Anthony Quinn was handed the wrong envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Play them in order. You got six and seven there. Play in <laughs> order. <laughs> Tony Ward goes. Tony Ward goes <laughs> to Lost in Yonkers. <laughs> Neil Simon, producer, Emmanuel. Oh, my God. No, no, it's... Nurse. It's Tommy Toon. <laughs> was it really a... Uh, was yeah, apparently he didn't... Uh, they gave him the wrong envelope, so when he opened it, it had the wrong name in it. Mm, I, I feel like Zorba the Jerk. <laughs> <laughs> So just how is he going to deal with it? He's another actor with no range when you really think of it. <laughs> yeah, he's got another one of those careers. He's that Greek guy all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, he's a Greek Frankenstein. Let's see what Anthony <laughs> thought of it. Would they interview him about it? Yeah. Right. At this point, I'm going to go home and I'm going to ask my wife, how did I look? <laughs> and if I looked uh, embarrassed, if I looked uh, like I'd committed a terrible 
horrendous error, I think I'll uh, perspire for about two seconds and forget about it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. So anyway, that was the Tony Award uh-huh. for this year. What else is going on? <laughs> what about J- J- Jerry Seinfeld? Oh, you'd like that. I'm not going to play that for Come on, you. do it. Ha, 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 Do it ha. up. Come on. Which, no. Which is this? Not yet. No. First, let's talk about Michael Landon. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Landon was uh, oh, given an award this weekend. Um, thanks to him, there was a park named after him opening up in his neighborhood. But he was too ill to accept wow. the award on his own, so he sent his wife and his son. His wife collected the award, and his son made a speech. She gave him an award for making it to the weekend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, what, a, what a horrible thing to say. Well, hey, I, I think that's more... Because didn't they only give him, like, a week? And they gave him four. Yeah, but it's got to be past four weeks, I got to tell you. So right. he's a survivor. Boy, he's wild. <laughs> hey, how about that Michael Landon, boy? Boy, that cancer's wild, isn't it? And that wild is, you know what, boy? <laughs> boy I got to tell you. Say, it kills a lot of people, though. You know? <laughs> I'll tell you that, boy. <laughs> Well, you know, just about everybody. Well, well, I can't imagine how many people have been lost to cancer. But I can't oh, yeah. that. Grrr. Rather a night with Brooke Shields than with cancer. Uh, I don't mind telling you. <laughs> All right, so this is Michael Landon Jr.? This is Mike Landon. Oh, Mike Landon. Oh, this is Michael and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Lon Green. It means more to me than, than I can express in words. Hmm. My younger children will be playing ball on this field someday, and I hope... And I'm going to do my best to be there watching them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for this honor. God bless you. Obviously mm. speaking his father's words. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Ah, bonanza. Good. There's a headline <laughs> in one of the tabloids this week that says Michael Landon wants to be buried next to Lauren Green. I thought, that was I thought he wanted to be buried next to uh, <laughs> Amb and Dracula. Uh, has he stuck himself in that little Joe? I'm little Joe. <laughs> Call me little Joe. Who is Mike Landon? <laughs> oh, so he's called his son Mike, and he's Michael. He yeah. wants to be buried in his teenage werewolf makeup. <laughs> th- whose household was more confusing? Michael. I don't know. I, it's like they forget how to name people when they go to Hollywood. Wait, well, Daisy. <laughs> what is it, honey? Hey, I wasn't calling you. I was calling Daisy Jr. <laughs> How come you didn't say Daisy Jr. then? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Why don't you say that? Gilbert, you're a junior, aren't you? Yeah. Gilbert Gaffey Jr.? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Good. Richard Pryor is in the news. Do you <clears> know he <throat> underwent uh, open heart bypass surgery last Wednesday at the UCLA Medical Center. There were rumors around that he had had a couple of heart attacks over the last week or so. He always looks like he's dying. Well, he's been suffering, he has admitted, he's been suffering from multiple sclerosis for the last five years. So, uh... Yeah. Now his heart's going on it. That's the only thing he's suffering from, I'm sure. (laughs) Meanwhile... Michael Landon laughs at Richard Pryor. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you want the odds. I think Michael Landon's got a better chance of making it. Oh, dear. <laughs> 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 I got to tell you, boy, Michael Landon's in bad shape, but Richard Pryor, well, I tell you, grrr, I don't think he's going to make it to the weekend. Well, they described Richard's surgery as uh, totally successful. Really? Yeah, and he's been upgraded to uh, stable condition. He's upgraded to dead. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, that's his uh, sense of humor, lady. They said he was uh, well enough to crack a few jokes. So, anyway, Black Crow's Chris Robinson. Yeah? He's in trouble again. I'm kidding. I got him coming in here this week. Nah, he won't make it. I don't think so. What happened? He was uh, cited for petty theft and assault. (laughs) Thursday. (laughs) In a Denver (laughs) store. (laughs) He got into trouble <laughs> after a clerk refused to sell beer to him after midnight. So he yeah. apparently Ooh. grabbed two cases or something and walked out with them. Really? Yeah, so that's how he got himself into some Rock more and trouble. roll. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, it's all right to just drink beer and take beer. It's not all right to have them sponsor your tour, though. No, I see. You know, he got into trouble with ZZ Top and got kicked off their uh He's a cool tour. guy. Because <laughs> yeah. he objected to their beer endorsement or something. Yeah, beer good. Ah, mm. ah, ah, beer good, good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Frankenstein always did get confused over like inanimate objects being his friend. Good, 
be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take a break. Hey, by the way, Gilbert Gottfried will be at Poor Billy's on Route 9 North in Woodbridge, New Jersey on June 9th. And um, he'll be... June 10th, he'll be at... The Funny Bone in Philadelphia. Okay. I'm doing that from memory. Yeah. Hey, dial a mattress. I got to tell you, I boy. I got to tell you, that's crazy. Isn't, hey, isn't that great, huh? How about that Michael Landon, huh? Yeah. Uh, hey, how about Richard Pryor? Hey, how about Aunt B? A and B? Aunt B. Oh, Aunt B. Boy, they upgraded him to Rick and Mortis, but I want to tell you. <laughs> I got to tell you. Dial a mattress. The National Shop at Home Service now has express delivery. Dial a mattress is the best. They have express delivery throughout the tri-state area, including Philly, the Poconos, the Hamptons, South I'll Shore, Philly. Cape May, and Delaware. I know you will. Yeah. <laughs> One easy call to 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. <laughs> You can have your mattress delivered at your convenience anytime up until midnight, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Planning on moving this weekend? Dial a mattress will deliver Saturday or Sunday till midnight. You pick up the time. You pick the time. Do you understand this, Gilbert? Yes. They will deliver. Wait a minute. On Saturdays and Sundays, they will deliver weeknights at your convenience. Instead of it being at their yeah. convenience, it's Ooh. at your convenience. I'll, I'll tell you something. Food. I'll tell you something. <laughs> a person like this, to have it delivered at your convenience, it's not like the usual mattress company. They're going to say, well, I'm going to deliver it when I want to. Right. Not when you want to sleep. Isn't that great? Yeah, I'm going to deliver at 3 o'clock in the morning because that's when I'm not busy. Because it's convenient. It's convenient for me, but what is it for you? That's right. They don't care for you. They don't care, I think. <laughs> anyway, you call now. They sent a few schwarzes over with a mattress. That's right. 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. <laughs> 60% off every bed every day. Silly Posturepedic, Sir to Perfect Sleeper, and Simmons Beauty Rest. They have water beds. They have sheets. They have pillowcases. They have everything. And it's great. Two-hour delivery. Just a two-hour. It's not like <laughs> another mattress company that will send you a week. A right. week, it takes them to Sometimes deliver. three months. Sometimes three months to deliver one mattress. That's right. Remember, 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. Hello. I'm here today. Bye, so. <laughs> Gilbert is mouthing off in here. About? It's about everything. Ooh. Yeah. It's very upset. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, his career, uh, yeah. he's got to make not sure going things... Quite no, it's going very well. It's just oh, he's got to make sure, sure it's maintained at a certain yeah. level of professionalism. <laughs> yeah. And he's very, very uh, yeah. adamant about it. He's yeah. prominently <laughs> featured in that trailer for Problem Child 2. Very... I think they beefed up his role. I thought Problem Child didn't do well. No, it did do well. It did? That was the only comedy that made a profit that year. You're kidding, because I yeah. thought... They made a sequel? What, for kind, of, what kind of money did that gross? Uh, I think it was like $60 million. So when you went 60 in... $60 million? When yeah. you went in to like, negotiate and say, hey, you know, they wanted you for the second one, did they give you a better part in the second one? I mean, more lines and stuff? About the same amount of time. How much time you put in on a movie like that? Not long. It was about a week. How long does it take you to memorize the lines? Not long? Oh, well, like I really memorize what they put in the script. Oh, you just... Oh, you yeah. ad-lib? yeah. Most of it. Oh, like, oh, like, I even met, like, I don't even so look. So each take is different. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even look at the script. <laughs> I don't even look at the, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I don't even, I even. Yeah, every, every, every other comedy bombed that year. That was Cadillac Man and uh, Quick Change. So yeah. when's that coming up, Problem Child 2? I think in July. See, I say I think because... Uh, see, and didn't all the critics say like how horrible you were, how horrible the picture oh, was, how oh, horrible John Ritter was? Pia Lindstrom... Uh, totally condemned problem, John. Call me the horrible Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> no, the disgusting Gilbert Gottfried. I don't know. I think that that's sort of a compliment, personally. Yeah. She said the disgusting Gilbert Gottfried. You know what you want to do? You want to write her a note and just say, uh, Pia, uh, this is the disgusting Gilbert Gottfried who had to work for everything he ever got. Yeah. I'm not Ingrid Bergman's daughter. Just send her an invitation to the C the premiere of Problem Child 2 at yin, 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 yin. Yeah, say, hey, here's a disgusting guy in another movie, that, and like, uh, unlike your mother, I'm alive and well and doing things. <laughs> and I'm not like your flabby sister who does nude scenes. And nice to be, uh, and nice to be uh, named after uh, urine. <laughs> pee, a, a pee on you. Hey, listen. I don't like. Uh, I don't like. It. I don't like talking chairs. I don't like critics who you know who who uh, whose mother <laughs> is a famous person. I'm always resentful of people who've had a very easy life growing up. I never know. Just, just cause your mother was Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. Right. You think you're important. Important. Yeah. I just don't like her, and I don't like her little snotty attitude. Like. Like, Gilbert's not going to the be... The disgusting Gilbert. Yeah, I mean, That's he's, you know, nice. he, the guy's trying to make a living. And he's like, okay, he's not Lord Olivier. 
<laughs> I'm not even Cousin Brucey, right. obviously. He's not Cousin Brucey. He's not even Sir Schwarzkopf. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but okay, the guy has a certain ability, and he's in a lot of movies, and people enjoy him. So, you know, why not say something nice? You know, not nice, but why even attack the guy and call him horrible? No, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. I mean, you, you know, your mom wasn't, as far as I know, you're, you're not related to Ingrid Bergman. No. Right? <laughs> no, I was related to Peter Laurie. You got a regular mom and yeah. dad, and your dad's still alive? Uh, oh, see, now it's getting into personal matter. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, I just threw yeah, it. Now gone. <laughs> your dad's still alive? Yeah, no, my dad was Jules Brenner. <laughs> <laughs> Is your dad still alive? Not that I know of. Oh, oh yeah. interesting. Oh. Well, you know, I'll tell you something. Oh, wow, Gilbert, you've had a, a pain childhood. Yeah. Your dad cut out? Uh, no, no, he, he left when I was two. Are you serious? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad leave? Your parents aren't married anymore? Uh, yeah, he was black, and he left when I was two. <laughs> no, seriously, you, do you know your father That's at all? sort of like I have the same childhood as Mariah Wait, Carey. Wait Did you know your father at all? You know your father at all. <laughs> oh, your fa yeah. your father was a famous <laughs> jazz singer. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't live with you. Yes. Uh, what? My no. father was butt man. Yes. <laughs> Is he going around stabbing people with a yes, screwdriver? Yes, he was black. Mm. He <laughs> but seriously. This, this was when it was a dime to get on the train, too. No, but, but no, seriously, your, your mom and pop uh, aren't together anymore? Uh, I know. I've, I haven't spoken to my mother for years. No, no I know you're, you're very close yeah. with your mother. Yes. Almost obsessed with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> mother, mother, mother. <laughs> uh, Robin, do you, get so the no dad? do you get the impression that Gilbert didn't have a father growing up? See, I always had the impression that Gilbert's mom, <laughs> dad, and he were all very close. I think they had him a little later in life. This mm -hmm. is my impression. Yeah. You know, so that he was like the only child to a, a couple people. of 50 year old <laughs> Gilbert's a miracle baby? <laughs> Are you a miracle baby? <laughs> so they never left him. They it's were a, so impressed. It's a miracle. Our <laughs> Gilbert was born. It's, we never thought, we always thought we'd be childless, and then Gilbert came into our lives. That's oh. Like, that's like those babies who are dropped <laughs> off, and Italian couples find them. Right. So. We uh, just prayed to Jesus, and he came to us. And you know, Gilbert. Then his father died, but mom stayed on, so Gilbert feels like, you know, totally obligated to keep his mother company. Dad left us and joined the circus. <laughs> <laughs> he, once he went to clown college, he changed. <laughs> <laughs> he was never the same after that. After he learned how to deal, stuff Gilbert? himself into a Volkswagen. What is it? You're uncomfortable answering this question? What? Oh, would you like to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you uncomfortable? <laughs> what is it? Your, your dad... Would you, you like to share Did your parents divorce? Can I ask you that? Oh, no. no. Yes, you your remember. father died, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you. Your father's yeah. no longer alive? No, I feel like Louis Anderson. <laughs> you know, my... my Donnie, you just called him. wants to get you on. Yeah, my, my father used to come home drunk and... And stuff. And in one way, I was happy he was coming home, but then he would beat my mother, so I would eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm going to give up comedy just to talk about my drunken father. And, Unfortunately, my father know. died when I ate him. Yeah. <laughs> He was so drunk that I just ate him one night, and that was the end of it. All right, so so the impression like, that I'm now getting is what your impression is, Robin, yeah. that Gilbert's father died, and Gilbert stayed with his mother. And, my father with Chablis. <laughs> and his and his and Gilbert lived with his mother for a real long time because he didn't want to leave her alone. Right. And well, that's pretty noble. Oh, oh, the, You're a decent guy. Yes. The room is open. Room number one. That's a decent thing, Gilbert. Yeah. A lot of people say bad stuff about you, but yeah. I'm not going to go along with that anymore. It's okay, Gilbert. We even get faxes in. See, I thought you were living with your mother because you just were afraid to enter the world yeah. and, you know, and all that stuff. But you were living with your mother because you didn't want to leave her alone. That's cool. Yeah. I'm a cool See, guy. I would feel the same way, though. Yeah. You know, just to leave mom alone. I, yeah. I'm a, I'm a real cool guy. I dig it. Yeah. This is a real sensitive <laughs> moment between us. You, you Mr. Self-Centered, is worried about your mother? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Robin. All right, let me continue. Please. Yeah, let's let's uh, finish up here. Because unlike right, Gilbert, there's a 14-year-old kid who got married yesterday. <laughs> Gilbert can't even get laid, and he's yeah. in his thirties. <laughs> Ricky Ray. I still have to go back to that 12-year-old girl. Just imagine being Ricky Ray. He um, is one of three brothers who are hemophiliacs. Wow. And he contracted AIDS. Whoa! And he got married. Well, he's planning a December 13th wedding. Let's hope he makes it. He has AIDS and he's able to get laid. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, you. Really. That's what I'm I wonder I'm in perfectly about. good shape. <laughs> you have no disease. I don't even catch colds. <laughs> his father, Clifford Ray, says he probably wouldn't have considered this well, of had his not. son not been afflicted with the uh, dreaded AIDS. Now, who are the parents of the... Oh, you got a tape. I didn't realize that. Hey, I said, so he passed away, say, in two months. I don't think I can live with myself because I denied him and 
I don't think I can look Winona in the face any longer and, and feel good about myself because of what I denied her. Who's Winona's wife? That's Winona the Ryder. That's 16-year-old who's going to marry. Now, he's uh, even marrying an older woman. And what about the uh, 16-year-old? I'd love a 16-year-old. <laughs> and she's cute. You got a picture? Yeah. Mm, well, look at Gilbert. Let yeah, me, let me yeah. see that. <laughs> the husband's not going to be around too much longer. <laughs> but in other words... What Can a, you imagine the, uh, subjecting your 16-year-old to becoming a widow? But what 16-year-old girl is going to marry a guy? Isn't she going to get AIDS? I don't know. They're not talking about a regular life here. Hey, if I'll get a 16-year-old, give me AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Winona's mother, Debbie Lindbergh, says, I feel I couldn't do better for a son-in-law if we'd hand-picked one. But isn't that sort of sentencing her to death, too? If it would have been anybody else, I would have said no immediately because of their ages. But because I've known Ricky for so long, hmm. I knew how sensible he is. And I, I told him not to wear a condom. no problem at all. Gilbert's searching for a dirty needle to give himself AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want AIDS. Maybe girls will feel bad for me. Ricky, frail his weight dropping, learned in March that the infection he's carried since 1986 as a result of a tainted blood transfusion hmm. has developed into AIDS. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I just don't understand letting your daughter... <laughs> oh. When he go bring his they body to me... They start a family uh, in a few years? After he had the bad blood transfusion, he became a homo. Why? Oh! <laughs> No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Winona says she isn't worried about contracting the HIV virus because she and Ricky plan to use safe sex practices. She got money? No. Hmm. The teens say they may start a family in a few years using artificial insemination through a sperm bank since Ricky's body fluids can transmit the AIDS virus. A few years. But for now, they're focusing on plans for a wedding, setting up house, and staying in school. See? See, yeah. Gilbert? Yeah. See, you can get laid. Yeah. See, every time you think you're down and out on a Saturday night, yeah. and you're sitting alone eating Chinese food on your lawn chair, AIDS. Yeah. think about it, that guy's getting laid, <laughs> so there's hope for you. Ricky looked at his young child bride the other day, and he said, you know, you'll probably be a young widow. Winona looked down and started crying, and Ricky said to her, I want you to get remarried again. I want you to have another life after this. And if you don't find somebody, I'll come back and find somebody for you. He's going to come back? Hey, come on. 14. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I told you. Board up the doors. <laughs> That's Ricky. It's got Ricky's face, but it's got bolts in his face. <laughs> oh, oh, there was a $1.1 million settlement by a school in Arcadia that gave him some trouble. So there is oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. oh. Dear. Oh, she's waiting for him to die. Yeah, that's Me just a minor detail. Yeah, I wouldn't leave that out. Meanwhile, yeah, it's just speaking. a minor point. <laughs> mm. No, she she's in love with a guy with AIDS. <laughs> well, hey, it happens. Yeah, it she, does happen, Gilbert. Don't be so callous I'm and cold. Sorry, I'm you sorry. don't know. Kind of cold and cynical. Speaking of love, Gilbert, yes? Frank Stallone has found it, according to Richard Johnson, with Sally Kirkland. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Me no one woman that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So Frank Stallone... Didn't Frank Stallone call up Richard Johnson and say, I'm dating Sally Kirkland? Yeah. I just you to know. Yeah. I, I think don't I, know why. I think I could have gotten and Sally. And Richard Johnson said, why? <laughs> I think Sally wanted to get it on with me. You do? Yeah. Oh, well, you did, too. I'd, I'm not saying anymore, because I don't know. Mm, Frankenstein Stallone. Ah. Mm. Ah. All I know is that they say they're really talented, happy. not me. And he says she's someone you can talk to. She's not like those other girls who can only converse about their nail appointments. Uh, slim pickings. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of good deeds, Jerry Seinfeld went hey, to uh, I helped Wichita, an old woman across the street. <laughs> Wichita, Kansas, to help the victims of uh, some tornadoes they had. Hey, you know, don't these victims of tornadoes you know that they should move? <laughs> I mean, if there's a tornado there. Why don't they move to a place that doesn't have to? You know, if God takes your house and the lifts it up and puts it somewhere else, maybe you should move. I say <laughs> that's as good a reason as any to find maybe a Maybe that's a sign. Why does that air spin like that? <laughs> <laughs> Why? All of a sudden they want to go to the Wizard of Oz? Let them move to another state. Right. So, uh, let Jerry tell us something. Do you, do you know that I could walk through a supermarket and find funny things there? So he looks pretty good. <laughs> I not see much damage. In fact, uh, I don't even see anybody's hair messed up. Looks like you came through it all right. 
Hey, this is no tornado. Everybody looks good. I've seen people look worse on the set of Roseanne. <laughs> Yeah, it's very easy to attack Roseanne Bow. <laughs> I don't do Roseanne jokes because it's so convenient, just because she's heavy. Because oh. she's fat, and she's a woman, and she's disgusting. <laughs> That's too easy. <laughs> you know, like, Jay and I say, don't do Roseanne jokes because it's too easy. We like a challenge. There are two don'ts in this business. Well, don't do it. Roseanne jokes, and don't go on vacation when you could be doing a comedy club. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I like, you know, I don't need Roseanne to do material. I could look at anything. For example, look at this. There's a sign on the wall. Who are these people who hang signs on walls for a living? Do they want to sign, uh, put the sign on a door instead? Hmm. But they're afraid when people are looking at the sign, they'd open the door and hit them in the head? Come on. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I have a question for you. Right. Yes? Yes. Uh, <laughs> which one, Jerry 1 or Jerry 2? Yes. <laughs> I was sitting here looking at, they have a, I guess, a review of this new Woody Allen biography. So how <laughs> is it? In the New York Post, Woody yeah. Allen. Because he's bald and has glasses. A lot of people think Woody Allen isn't funny anymore, but Jay and I don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not my question. I don't care about the book. Uh, there's a picture of Woody, right. Mia, and a couple of the kids. All of Vietnam is emptied out into this man's apartment. <laughs> what is that all about? And look at the kids' names. Mia doesn't give me a Woody. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Here's the kid she had... And I generally had... don't do dirty material, but <laughs> Jay Leno wrote that for me. <laughs> Here's the kid she had with Woody Allen. That kid's name is Satchel O'Sullivan Farrow. That's right. Because he is named after the Pharaoh who oppressed the Jews. He's named <laughs> after the Pharaoh that played the trombone. <laughs> <laughs> and then the daughter's name is Dylan O'Sullivan Farrow. After the great Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> so does Mia just keep all of her kids under the Pharaoh name? That's right, because Woody does not want to take responsibility for those kids. They are not legally married. Oh, I see. They are pharaohs. I just wondered, because... Uh... After the great pharaoh and sphinx. <laughs> and pharaoh... You'd think Woody'd want his only kid named Alan. No, because Woody and Mia are not married. Mm. And the pharaoh used to wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and write material. <laughs> right. Pharaoh, before he depressed the Jews, would write uh, jokes. <laughs> he would go right to the pyramid, get to the typewriter, and start writing material. Yes. He'd look in the morning paper. That's right. <laughs> you know that the pharaoh could walk through the sphinx and just come up with material. <laughs> say, hey. Terry, you're so talented. Do a, do a joke about uh, megaphones. Megaphones. Why do people need megaphones? Why? Did an ordinary microphone not loud enough? <laughs> you need something? Why? People can't yell? So people need a megaphone. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I didn't think of yelling. Gee, why? Did people get together one day and say, hey... It looks bad if people start yelling, they'll start spinning in the right, mouth. Right, Very good material. Yeah. I mean, it's not great material, but just that right off the top just of your head. Just off the top, right of, the top of your head. head. Go okay. ahead, ask me about any little thing. All right, uh, airlines. Airlines? No, I have nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing about airlines. You don't well, have anything on now that. Now I'm stumped. <laughs> All oh, right. boy. Well, Howard, one of my favorite events has happened. Uh, the cow calling contest. Mm. Moo moo. <laughs> that happened this weekend in Miami or Miami, Texas. Come here, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> in the Panhandle. This was the 43rd annual Cal Pollen Contest. And uh, I guess we have the winner of the men's division, David Bean. David Bean? <laughs> Oh, oh, just hold on. Sounds <laughs> 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 like Gilbert masturbating, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Gilbert, he loves this stuff. <laughs> Gilbert loves Americana. Yeah. <laughs> and so do I. <sighs> it's actually Gilbert's mother calling for his father. <laughs> <laughs> you. <Yoo-hoo. laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <sighs> all right. So that's all she wrote. 1019, let's remind everyone Gilbert Gottfried will be at Poor Billy's, Route 9 North, in Woodbridge, <laughs> Woodbridge New Jersey, on the 9th of June. On June 10th, in Philadelphia, Funny Bones, it's Gilbert Gottfried. 
<laughs> Just gotta let one of those out every once in a while. <laughs> What time were you on, Larry King? What time were you on? What, what uh, exactly? It was like right after I got off from the club, so it was like 2 in the morning or something. <laughs> was it good? I mean, did it go well? Did yeah, you... it was okay. Uh, uh, was that your cup of tea? It's, you're, it, was, it wasn't... Well, you know, radio's not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, it really isn't. I really wanted to take over for Joy Behar and be a permanent guest host. What happened over at ABC? Like, they asked you to fill in on Saturdays, and then they told you you were no good? Uh, no, they asked me back. And then you said no? Yeah. Why? You just, well, you I, I decided it wasn't my cup of tea. Right. But didn't they want you to do it with um, R Richard Bay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I know why it wasn't your cup of tea. Is that what happened? Yeah, well, they were asking me back with a few different ways, and I said no. You want to just go on as you? Yeah. And they said, no, we want to put you on with another guy. Yeah. Well, what happened the first time you went on? They said that was a, they acted as if that was a disaster in the paper. Well, they, they made it in the paper like it was like I was trying to take over their show, like trying to do a series out of it. Oh. To me, it was like a guest spot. Right. And then all of a sudden, they write this big article. A big review. Yeah. Yeah, like, all right. I thought, what, this is a big review on, like, one night? <laughs> one morning? That show business is rough. Yeah. It's a yeah, one-nighter. It's really tough there. Let me remind everyone that Jackie Penthouse Joe Page Martling this Wednesday, June 5th. Fortunately, not a conflict with um, Gilbert's dates. Good. At Bananas I'll Comedy be in, Club. Yes. I'll be in Woodbridge, New Jersey on the 9th. And poor Billy's, and in Philadelphia on the 10th at Funny Bone. So it's Jackie this Wednesday, June 5th at Bananas Comedy Club in the Fort Lee Holiday Inn. For information, you dial 516-922-Y. Now, Jackie, this Thursday, June 6th, from 6 to 8 p.m., he'll be autographing his new Polygram video live in concert at Alwick Video in nice. Livingston, New Jersey. to a hooker. Yeah, hey, you know. And I'm chimpanzee, says. You know, Gilbert does all those impressions and everything, but man, all I gotta do is tell a few jokes. I make more money than him. <laughs> Boy Gary this Saturday night at Jimmy Reed's in Ramsey, New Jersey for the big 10th anniversary party. Your chance to win $1,000 in cash and prizes. Don't miss Josie Sang, stuttering John's band, appearing at the Red Spot in Staten Island this Thursday, June 6th. For more information, call 516-826-SANG at Big Josie Sang Concert. And if you're planning a wedding or party, why not have the music the way you want it? Call Scott the Engineer's Rocket Entertainment at 718-BAG-5040. Oh, sounds good. Gilbert, thanks for stopping by. Next time, call for Yeah, okay. I'll All call. right. <laughs> Robin, we'll be back tomorrow with a special edition of our show, the anniversary show, as you know. Really? That's right. What is it the anniversary of? I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. All right. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Can't make up your mind, huh? I'll go with this. <laughs> All right. 92.3 K Rock WYSP WJFK. WJFK. Hey, I got to tell you, boy. Wild, hey, now, how about that WJFK, boy? Huh? <laughs> Over in Washington, huh? Isn't that something? Washington. I'll do a little uh, disc jockey stuff here, Gilbert. Okay. I'll show off here because radio's All not right. your bag. 66 degrees, mostly sunny this morning, cloudy this afternoon. Slight chance of brief showers, highs in the low 80s, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I got to tell you, tonight, partly cloudy, lows around 60s. I will hit the post, by the way. Watch that. You know oh, what that yes. means. When the, hit the vocal. Okay. Oh, okay. Tuesday, partly sunny, highs in the mid-70s. I'll be in Philadelphia on the 10th at the Funny Bone. Let me handle this. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Your time is over now. And Woodbridge, New Jersey on the 9th, or Pillage. All right. This is music from The Who at 92.3 K-Rock, WYSP, WJFK. By the way, K-Rock has a 20-music marathon. Why oh, I admire this radio stuff. Please, Gilbert, I'm you're going to make me miss the... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 20 music marathon coming up. <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to... It was Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs>